This is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Let us stand for our doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. call to worship. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. O oh Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye earth and sing praises. I'm a hymn of praise this morning, hymn number 52. Guide me, O thy great Jehovah. Pilgrim through this barren land, I am weak, but thou art mighty. Hold me with thy powerful hand. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven. Our morning prayer will be given by Brother Charles Rawls this morning.
Precious everlasting Father, we come to you again this Sunday morning, Lord God, in this house that's been built to worship you, Lord. Lord, I ask that you come down and touch us, be with us, dwell amongst us. Let us worship you, Lord God. Fill us. Spread throughout this entire building, Lord God. Let us lose ourselves within you. Let us send up the praise and the glory to you, Lord God. We invite you, Lord, to come in this place, to fall fresh upon us. Lord, we invite you to come and be with the minister, with the worship leader, with the choir, with the musicians, with the ushers, with the stewards, the trustees, the uh, lay people, and everyone, Lord God, come down. For we are calling upon you, Lord. For this service is not for us. This service is not for fancy. This service for you, Lord God. For us to say thank you. For us to praise you. For us to show the world what you've done for us, Lord God. Lord, come into this house. Be with us, Lord God. Fill us, Lord God. Lord, we invite you to come to this service. For this is your service, Lord God. For we are just vessels of the blessings that you've given to us. Let us give back to you, Lord God, in praise and worship. All that we have, all that we can do is because of you, Lord God. Come down, Lord. Let us worship you. Let our worship be satisfying in your sight, Lord God. Let our worship be pleasing to you, Lord God. Let our worship just show the world, Lord God, what you have done to us and for us. Lord, if it's in your will, let this service go on. Just with the Holy Spirit moving between us. If it's in your will, Lord God, let us be filled today and be able to take what we hear, take what we have, take what we know, and go up into the world, Lord God, for never leave us. And we will never leave you. Lord, I invite you to this worship service. This service is for you. With love, respect, honor, and mercy. Have mercy, Lord God. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on this service, Lord God. In your name is sake, we pray. Amen.
Thank you, Brother Charles, for ushering in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In this place today, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Okay, where am I? Okay, scripture lesson. St. John, the 14th chapter, verses 1 through 14. And it reads, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Jesus is saying this. He's saying, in my father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that ye also may be where I am. Ye know the way and the place where I am gone. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not we don't know where you are going. So how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me, Jesus says. If you really know me, you will know my father as well. For now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the father and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak of my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me, whom is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very, Verily, truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have done been I have been doing and they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Ye may ask me of anything in my name and I will do it. God's word to the people of God. Now we'll have a selection by the voices of New Bethel, and then our ushers will come forth with our tithes and offering, and our, past, our recognition of our visitors and announcements by Sister Tasha Hill, followed by our pastor's word.
Father God, we praise you and we thank you, God, for your Holy Spirit that's in this place right now, God. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that live within us that are saved and have accepted Jesus Christ in our lives. God, we bless this offering today that it may be used for the uplifting of your kingdom and somehow <coughs> souls may be saved. In Jesus Christ's name I pray, amen. amen. All things come of thee, O oh Lord. Good morning, church. Good morning. It is so good to see each and every one of you out today. Let me be able to find the thing that's going with this. I am going to read a few thank you cards and announcements and then do visitors. A special thank you. It's easy to be grateful when there are wonderful people like you in the world. We want to thank everyone for their prayers and thoughts, Miss Gloria and the Gloria. Rawls family. Thank you very much. A very special thank you, as warm as it can be, to express appreciation to you from Grateful Me. Thanks for allowing me to speak on Good Friday. Because you, you gave to me, I want to give back to your church. Let this be in memory of Mrs. Annie May and Deborah Gates. Um, to the missionary account. Thanks again, Marvin Gates. So he made a donation back to the missionary in honor in memory of Ms. Annie May and Ms. Deborah Gates. Thank you from Rod Lights from Richmond, Virginia. Thank you to my church family for your calls and prayers during my illness. I am doing much better. May God bless each and every one of you. The donation for Killingsworth women has been extended. The deadline to make your donations will be Saturday, May 20th. The youth will bring their church's donation over to the educational building for the YPDers at Mount Pisgah AME Church. Um, if you're unable to go with them, you can send your donations with the representative. If you um, would like to drop off anything, you can do so next door. They're asking for regular coffee, paper plates, powdered creamer, liquid laundry detergent, plastic utensils, and paper towels. Thank you in advance for supporting our youth. Reverend Eskew will be preaching on the fourth Sunday at 2 p.m. at Mount Zion in Jalapa, and we're asking anyone who can go with her, please do so. On the third Sunday, May 21st, 2023, will be our annual Women's Day program. We're asking all ladies to pay $50 and men to pay $25, and we're also asking you to wear your white dresses and any color hats. Our theme this year is telling the story, how I made it over. And we will be honoring some women um, throughout the community, and our guest speakers will be Benita, Harrison McCollum and Sharia Williams Brown. Um, for those of you who don't know, they are know they are the owners of the daycare at the end of Hendrick Street. So those will be our Women's Day speakers, and we will be doing some honors on that day. So please, please, please come out and support. Also, all women, if you'd like to participate in our Women's Day Choir, we would greatly appreciate it and ask that you join us. I will get back with you on the song and the date of our rehearsal. Jordan McClendon, one of our YPDers, is running for the May Queen. 
Um, she will be representing New Bethel AME. The pageant is May 20th, 2023 at 6 p.m. And you can make any donation to, I have a cash app here, or you can um, make checks to New Bethel AME Church um, in her honor. So please help support Jordan McClendon by giving a donation um, as she is running for the May Queen, which is hosted by the American Legion Post 217. Pleasant Hill Missionary Baptist Church is offering Camp Daniel Summer Academic Program. It's a summer enrichment program for students. The program is for four weeks and it will be held four days a week, Monday through Thursday from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. It's designed to provide summer enrichment learning opportunities for students entering first through the sixth grade. Um, it will begin on June 12th and end on July 14th. And again, the time is 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Breakfast and lunch will be um, provided. So if you need any additional information, I have a form here and an application if you'd like to um, sign your children up. Again, it's a summer enrichment program from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. The Handy Simon Scholarship 2023. Um, this scholarship is for due date is May 31st. Um, I'm sorry, it's going to be June 10th, and they will have a committee review reviewing it. Um, it is for the Connectional AME Church. And it will be announced during the 20th Quadrennial Convention in Orlando, Florida. And it's called the Connectional Handy Simons Book Scholarship Award for um, students 2023 to 2024. We have, they have guidelines of um, criteria that you must meet. So all of you all who have juniors or seniors, please get with me to get a copy of that scholarship. The Lexington Rosenwald Alumni Foundation is also awarding a scholarship for two 2023 graduating high school seniors. The applicant must be a descendant of Rosenwald High School alumni or uh, staff member, faculty. Applications can be, um, or questions can be answered by Mrs. Jenny Simpkins or Ms. Sandra Light. So I have applications for that as well. Lastly, the Lexington NAACP is offering a 2023 scholarship um, for two students in the amount of $500. They must be a graduating senior, reside in Lexington County, and aspire to attend a two-year college, technical institution, or a four-year college, and complete and submit all components of the application. So I know they have gotten, all of these have gotten applications that have not been fully completed. So please complete all aspects of the um, application and submit it. So if you have seniors um, wanting to go to school and you don't know how you're going to afford it or anything, they have opportunities here. For those of you who have put students through school, you understand the cost, whether it's books, um, daily living, or tuition. So please, 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 if you know any students residing in Lexington County or descendants of Rosenwald, please apply for these scholarships. That is all I have for the announcement. And I don't see any visitors here, but it's good to see Mr. and Ms. Michael Johnson and the Cummings family. So thank you all for coming out today. And I pray that you all have a wonderful week. Morning. morning. It's so good to see everyone here today. Um, my pastor's words is simply continue to pray for each other and for our nation. Uh, I know uh, every time we open to look at the news, it's another tragedy, but we thank God anyway, and we know that God is in control. But we as a people have to pray as well as uh, be active in our political and politics to ensure that we change some of these laws, amen? It's not enough just to pray. 
And um, I, I'm just excited today uh, because, and I, I don't know if this is the appropriate time or what have you, but we have our first great-grandchild that was born on Thursday afternoon. His name is Asaya Marcellus. Amen. Five pounds and two ounces. And then we had a great grandniece that was born yesterday around six. And I can't remember her name. Her name is Eden. I don't remember the last name. But Eden. And uh, so we're grateful our family is growing. And uh, if those of you who know, the Johnson family is so small. And we have an extension. We just go crazy. So I've been shooting out pictures to Michael and Bert and everybody about this little old baby, and we're just so happy. So we thank God for all of the babies that might be born. I hear we're getting ready to have another baby who is the extended part of this church family. So God is blessing. Amen. God is blessing. So I thank God for each one of you all, and I thank the choir for the song that you sang. I wasn't that familiar with it. But the words is part of my sermon, so I thank you. Once again, we see how the Holy Spirit work together for those who love the Lord. Amen. Amen. Turn it back over to the word for you. The next song, uh, the choir will lead us in worship, and the next voice you will hear will be those of your pastor with the sermon for today.
first give an honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the head of my life. Uh, those who have your Bibles, your Bibles, I ask that you turn with me to 1 Peter, the second chapter, verses 1 through 10. Now, I will be reading it out of the Message Bible. And the scripture you heard earlier was a lectionary text, the gospel message. And I will be reading the epistle, uh, and they all run together. Amen. Amen. And I'm reading it out of the Message Bible, and it reads, So clean house, make a clean sweep of malice and pretense, envy and hurtful talk. You've had a taste of God. Now like infants at the breast, drink deep of God's pure kindness. Then you'll grow up mature and whole in God. Welcome the living stone, the source of life. The workman took one look and threw it out. God set it in a place of honor. Present yourselves as building stones for the construction of a sanctuary vibrant with life in which you will serve as holy priests, offering Christ approved, lives up to God, approved, lived up to God. The scriptures provide precedent. Look, I'm setting a stone in Zion, a cornerstone in the place of honor. Whoever trusts in this stone is a foundation, will never have cause to regret. To you who trust him, he's a stone to be proud of. But those who refuse to trust him, the stone the workman threw out is now the chief foundation stone. For the untrusting, it's a stone to trip over, a border blocking the way. They trip and they fall because they refuse to obey just as predicted. The key verses I'll be preaching from, 9 and 10. But you are the chosen by God, chosen for the high calling of the priestly work, chosen to be a holy people, God's instruments to do his work and to speak for him, to tell others of the night and day difference he made for you from nothing to something, from rejected to from rejected to accepted. Oh God, our Father, we thank you once again for yet another opportunity to break the bread of life. Now, Lord, I simply ask that you anoint me afresh. Help me to rightly divide your word. In Christ's name, amen. amen. Chosen for a title, an unusual people, an unusual people. Now, we see that when Peter was writing this, he was writing it to basically a new church, a Gentile church, and it was new Christians. Everything was so new, and they didn't fully understand what Christ's death and resurrection, what position did it put those who accept him and believe him in. And so he wanted them to know that Christ was that stone that was rejected. But we know that even though he was rejected, God approved of him. And not only did God approve of him, he allowed him to go to the cross when Jesus went to the cross freely because he was obedient to God the Father and his love for each one of us. And so with that having been said and done, Peter wanted us to understand and wanted them to understand, you all are peculiar people. You're unusual. So as Christians, it's something is different about us because at one point we was living in the darkness, but once we accept Christ, we all of a sudden see things from a different lens. And so the titles, you know, we're not hung up on titles. We have, uh, and I thank God for Charles in his prayer, he mentioned the different offices and officers, the positions and the titles we have in the church. Amen. He mentioned the stewards, the trustees, the mission of the different officers. Well, Christ, when Peter was teaching, 
Peter understood the titles that God through Christ has given us. First title, he said, you are chosen race. See, God chose us. When we accept his son Jesus as his personal son, as our personal son, we are chosen, chosen by him. Think about it. We talk about babies and things that's going on and where we are in the world. When we are Christians, that's a chosen. And not only chosen, when we're chosen, it has to do with when we can show the difference in our earlier life in darkness and our life now. There should not be, people should be able to see a difference. We should be able to know the difference, amen? amen. The things we used to do when we was living in the darkness, that just doesn't feel as comfortable anymore, amen? amen. I, can you remember when we used to have gatherings and what we had more of, what you ran out of? And I'm not gonna say what we ran out of, but what we didn't run out of, amen? So most of us know when we was in the darkness and partying like rock stars, we never ran out of certain, certain ingredients of the party, of certain things. Might run out of potato chip, salad and chicken, but you didn't run out of you know what, amen? A chosen, a royal race, chosen. And then he says, a royal priesthood, priesthood. See, everything Peter was teaching was how God wanted his people to live. And see, the first thing he said early in the chapter, we, it's like little, born, little babies. You know, we have to sweep the house. Every now and then, you know, we have to do some spring cleaning. And we do it in our houses, but what do we do in our hearts and our minds? What are we thinking about? What are we focusing on? God's pure kindness. This is what he said, <coughs> excuse me, as a royal priesthood, we keep our mind on the covenant. Every first Sunday, as a tradition and as a practice, we go through a portion of the doxology, amen? Yes. So the covenant that God has with us, we love the Lord. We love the Lord with all of our heart, with all of our mind. And our neighbor as ourselves, the second and greatest commandment, right? See, that's what he said, as a royal priesthood, the priesthood of a holy nation. A holy nation. The priests in the Old Testament, we knew they were primarily in Israel. They were holy men charged with serving in the temple, in the tabernacle. Holy people, charged with serving. Do you consider yourselves holy? What makes you holy? Is it the way you dress? Mm -mm. What makes you holy? What's in your heart? The actions, the way you live. Amen. Amen. A pure heart. Holy. Holy. Keeping your covenant with God. God made a covenant with his people. I'll never leave you not forsake you. So when we serve God, we serve it with the attitude in the mind that God is always with us. Amen. No matter what we go through, Amen. he's with us. Yes. On our bed of affliction, he's with us. Amen. The scripture, the text, the gospel message, let not your heart be troubled. He's with us. Yes. Let not our hearts be troubled when you think about that. When you know that you have a God, he made a promise. And it go way back to Abraham. A promise. I'll never leave you. I'll be with you. Think about the life of Joseph. Think about Job. All those people went through a hard time, but God was with them. Even when it looked like the world was against them. God is with each one of you all today. Each one of us. Oh, we have our hard times. But know that God is going through it with you. God. The priests of Israel were holy people. And 
a holy nation, a holy nation. Peter tells us, and he was talking to the Christians, and primarily they were Gentiles, as it's forestated, but they were royal priesthood. So often we forget who we are or whose we are, who own us. He's given us an awesome responsibility. And I know a lot of people hate to hear about anything political from the pulpit, but think about our foreparents. Think about the accomplishments that we made as a race. All indigenous people, someone had to come together and it was usually wherever they worship their God is what made the difference. And so I'm encouraging each one of us to take it serious about a holy nation, a holy nation. We have to invest our time and responsibility in doing those things that will help other people, other people, no matter what their status is, to achieve a relationship with God. And really now, with the way things are in the world, when you go shopping in the mall or when you send your children to school, all of that is in danger. But we can't walk around in fear and not go, but we can work with our families, with our people about cultivating a relationship with God. Because if they have that relationship with God, if, you, if your life is required in a moment's notice, you know where you'll be to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. A peculiar people. How do you see us going around shopping? Oh, we watch out who's standing around us. We, we've changed some of our patterns. But we know, we know, we know as Christians where the end, where we'll end up in the end. That's why when we go through sickness and trials and struggles, we know who to call on. And it's so important, saints of God, that we teach our children to establish a relationship. Not when it's convenient, but at all times, know that you know that you know. And second, lastly, a people of God, God on us. He chose each one of us. Not that we were so pretty or we were so smart. He chose us. God is an awesome God. God is an awesome God. And he's given the church, those of us who call ourselves Christians, he's given us an awesome responsibility. The task of the church is to teach the gospel, to preach the gospel, to live the gospel among each other and transform the nation and the church. How can we tell? How do we transform? We transform the church by love. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, so loved each one of us. He loved us so much that he made us in his own image, in his express likeness. He made a covenant with us that I'll always be with you, no matter what. Even if you're limping, you're moaning, you're groaning, God is with you. He understands everything you're going through. Everything you're going through. So as God's chosen, as those are chosen by God, chosen for the high calling. So when you walk in a store and you know that you're a Christian, you can walk with your head up high. Not that you're proud or you're arrogant, but simply because you know who you are. You know who owned you. You know who chose you. Amen. It's almost like those of us who have children and grandchildren. We know our children and grandchildren. I can tell any parent in here that their child did something, and they can tell you, oh, no, sister, I know my child. And that doesn't sound like that particular child. It might be one of the other ones. But see, because you know your children, God know us. Amen. So can God, hallelujah, when that's when when others talk about you and use all kind of things, say all kind of things and do things, when you're God, he'll defend.
defend you. You don't have to defend yourself. Amen. 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 I can remember when uh, my children were raised closer with Camillas, and they raised, were raised like sisters and brothers, and we would know who thought up what to do. I can remember one time, mm, one of them stole the car, no license, all between the four of them. Not one of them had a driver's license. And all of a sudden, the car rolled out, and I was running my mouth on the phone. I knew from the moment I heard that car hit the house whose idea it was. It was her idea. <laughs> Amen. Jamie and, and Tara rolled along. She giving the directions. Wesley, the youngest one, said this is not right. They rolled all over Bonnie Forrest. Not narrow license. All four of them could have been killed. But I knew who was the mind behind the devil, man. I knew, and every parent in here, you can tell what one of your children would do. Amen. You know who's the mind and who push up the other one. And that's what God says to us. I love you so much. I know everything about you. And I've equipped you to make the trust from the world. Have you ever read about Azusa Street? They were so holy and sanctified until all the bootlegger houses, the liquor stores, the hunky tonks, everything closed down because it took a few holy people to preach the word and live the word and be excited about the word of God. It cleaned up a whole town. We have power, power, Holy Ghost power. Holy Ghost power. But until we recognize, until we recognize that we are a peculiar people. No, you're not supposed to look like everybody else. You're not supposed to talk like everybody else. Because you fallen. Hallelujah. You fallen God by accepting Christ as your personal Savior. You've had a heart transplant. A heart transplant. You've had someone to regulate your mind. Regulate your mind. You have brand new feet. You see things from a different perspective. So today, own up to who you are. Don't be ashamed. If somebody said, why do you do this? Well, I'm peculiar. Well, why are you peculiar? Because my daddy is peculiar. What daddy will send his son to die on the cross for a sinner like me? What daddy said, I'll be with you, even if you make your bed in hell, I'll be with you. I'm peculiar because I have a peculiar father. And it's a father that loved me so much, so much. So if he loves me like that, why can't I give love to everyone around me? My nation, they could change. Oh, God, our father, we thank you so much. For the titles that you've given us, the titles. Lord, you said we are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession. So, oh God, as, as you are, as we are your possessions, we continue to ask you to help us, help us as we pilgrim through this land to do your will as your chosen people. In Christ's name, we pray, amen. amen. At this time, we'll ask Evangelist Davis to open the doors of the church. So if you're not sure that you're one of those peculiar people, if you're not sure that you've given your heart, your mind, and your life to Christ, think about the living water, the stone that was rejected, he was rejected because of us. And he was willing to take that rejection so that we might be free. Evangelist Davis. Thank you. 
Let us stand as we open up the doors of the church. We heard an awesome message this morning. We are a peculiar people since we accepted Jesus Christ in our lives. not sure today where you stand with Jesus Christ we're asking you to come and give the preacher your hand and give God your heart maybe you want to recommit your life back to God maybe you've been out there and you feel like you strayed away but you're ready to come in like the prodigal son we're asking you to come forward this morning. Maybe someone needs prayer this morning. Maybe you want to come to the altar and pray to the Lord on your own. You ask him to come. prayer this morning. You may be seated. And let's listen to the song. Let's listen to the song. Amen. There may be something that you want God to do for you. Yes. We're asking God to do it. Yes. It's not too late. You can come if you desire to do so. The song says, Lord, Lord, do it. it done, but God will do it the right way. Amen? Yes. God will do it. someone to request special prayer and you feel you want me to come down there to you 
She's uh, Sister Mary Alice. She's been having some pains in her back. She's not able really to come down here. And uh, before we finish, right before I get, you can't hear me. Okay. Before we finish, it's time to play some Kia. What's that Kia song? Y'all can't hear me now? Can you hear me now? Okay, I'm going to come down and pray for her. And you all know Sister Mary Alice is my eyes. Amen. When I go around visiting, she ride with me. And everybody thinks that I'm doing her the favor, but she's doing me a favor too, Brother Freddie Jr. Because she can see and she's missed three weeks. And all of us know that's not like Mary Alice. And so, and she's standing in the gap for her sister as well. And so, we know how she loves everybody in saying here. Y'all know that, right? And if she can call you, she'll call you. So I want each one of you all, if you would um, point your hands this way. And I'm going to know her. Amen. Because my partner got to get better. This is one of your children, one of your peculiar people, Lord God. One of your people that love, 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 love her family and her church family, Lord God. So, Lord God, we ask that you touch her body from the crown of her head, oh God, to the very soles of her feet. Lord, we ask that you continue to work with her ears, Lord God, so that she can hear better, Lord, to the best of the ability of the mechanics that they've given her. And Lord God, we pray a special prayer for her back, oh God. Oh God, for her back, Lord God. We know that it's difficult, but oh God, we thank you for her faith, oh God, in you and her trust that she's not going to give up. She's going to press away, Lord God. So we ask that you touch her, touch her, touch her. Anoint her, Lord God, for you said in your word that your anointing, your anointing, your anointing, your anointing, break every bondage, every yoke. So, Lord God, we thank you. And, Lord, as she's standing in the gap for her elder sister, Lord God, we thank you for Sister Benny, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, that as you work with her as well, Lord God, that you give the doctors the mind of Christ. Oh, God, each one of us in here is going back and forth to doctors, oh, God. We pray that you give them the mind of Christ. Lord, we trust you. We trust you. We will obey. And, oh, God, we will, we will praise you and continue to tell others about the goodness of the goodness of you and your love. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. God is good. Hallelujah. 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 Back and forth to doctors and standing in the gap. But God, 
said, we are peculiar people. We have power. We can pray for each other. And we might be down, but God will get us back up. I feel so good today. I believe, Brother Doug, I can make it all the way around and back up front. Oh, God is good. God is good. Trust him. He'll raise you up. He'll lift you up. ago I couldn't do that but oh God is good when you go when I go to the grocery store now I don't have to pop all the time in the handicapped spaces I, I tried brother Charles I said I believe I feel good enough today I'm gonna park a little bit further off and I'll be huffing and puffing but God is good trust God don't give up don't give up don't give up when I look at people like Sister Polly, when she was going through, Sister Polly missed very few Sundays. She pressed away. She pressed away. And that's how I look at others. And I said, God, if you love them well enough to do, you would do it for us. He has no respect to persons. I asked the choir to sing one song, and we're going to do communion. Amen after that. I want us to know that we know that we know that we know God loves us. He loves us. And we need to love ourselves as much, if not more, than how God loves us. Brothers, you ready? No, ma'am. <laughs> you ain't bringing music. Y'all can't sing it a cappella. I didn't bring that today. Safe in his arms. No, I can't. Y'all can't sing it a cappella. Okay. Okay. All right. I guess I got to say it. Okay. We'll transition over to uh. We might can do a little bit of it. I don't know. Whew. Guess we do that. I don't ran out of time. safe in his arms. 
We are safe. Remember that wherever you go. We are safe. Thank you, Brother Tony. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, the Holy Spirit. That's what Brother Bernard taught us about this morning, the Holy Spirit, how it come down over our forefathers, and they were able to minister to us. Okay, let us say the general confession together. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, make of all things judge of all men. We acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most griefs to have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. Provoke them, most griefs. our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have, Have mercy upon us, O oh, merciful Father, for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please you in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Prayer of humiliation. We do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful souls and bodies may be made clean by his death and washed through his blood, that we may ever more dwell in him and he in us. The prayer of consecration. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of your tender mercies did give your only son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his oblation of himself, once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute in this holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech you and grant, we beseech you and grant that we receiving these your creatures of bread and wine, according to your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, holy institution and remembrance of him and passion may be partakers, hallelujah, of his blessed body and blood. For those of you who have your sacrament in your hand, I ask at this time, now, if you're able, you can stand, amen? If you're not, remain seated. That you lift your bread, the body of Christ, which was broken for me, I eat it with thanksgiving in my heart. Let us eat. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for, for you and preserved for your soul and your body unto everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you and be thankful. The blood of Christ. Evangelist Davis, will you lead us in the Lord's Prayer? The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses 
Free forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This time we'll sing a song of fellowship. and be in the number one more time. Yeah. Praise, yeah. praise God from whom all blessings flow. of him. <laughs> 